series as well. It was uh, shot in the 80s and it was iconic and the cars and the actors and everything about the show was iconic and you will recognize it once we walk up to this car. Well long story short her neighbor down the street is the uh, proud owner of this car and he's also got an amazing collection of other cars and uh, well that yeah that's it right there. So today we're gonna take out one of these cars and uh, oh man yep it's gonna be a great day. <laughs> He's ready for oh us. Oh my it god, looks I'm like. so excited. <laughs> so excited, so buckle up. <laughs> How are you? <ya? laughs> I haven't seen you in. Well, it's been a few months. <laughs> Great to see you. <laughs> Hi, how you doing? Good to see you again. See you. <laughs> What's new in life? You. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Every time I see this car, ugh. Oh, that's great. Right. <laughs> That looks great. Oh, beautiful. Look at all your left. <laughs> <laughs> and you are the proud owner of this beautiful machine. This Ferrari Miami Vice replica. These were built on Corvettes. Uh, the original cars were built by Tim McBurney in California. And uh, he was sued by Ferrari and they ended up in the impound lot. And Michael Mann, who shot Miami Vice, saw them thought they'd be great for the show and end up buying them. The, hit, the car or, was such a hit because the film was such a hit that they needed, immediately needed more cars. So they contacted Carl Roberts, who okay. built, he built the Miami Vice cars. He was a stunt car coordinator and stunt car builder. And so uh, Carl built this car. I contacted him later on and uh, had him document it was the car he built. And when the show was over, the car ended up going to uh, Michael Talbot, who played Detective Stan Switek on the show. Yes, one of my and, favorite characters. Uh, and Michael uh, was working with Purple Heart, which is uh, a veterans organization to take care of some veterans and take them out on excursion, keep the car. So, so you've got it from Michael Talbot. Right, right. And wow. We have both names on the title. I kept his name on the title, obviously, because you know, if, uh, I'm not important, he is. You know? Oh so, yeah, that's <laughs> absolutely fascinating so, I, so this exact car was actually used in the filming this and was a this was a uh, a camera car camera car now the the other two cars were used with cameras but the cameras in that day were large as the whole hood yeah and so uh, when the camera cars were being used they you know they mounted them way up here and of course still has the mounts when the car right was there. redone, mm -hmm, camera had, unit two. Yeah, they asked me if I wanted to take those off. I said, no, just leave them on there. And uh, when they redid the car, the car was 
pretty rough when we got it because it had been jumped and you know it was a that, stunt car. that iconic scene where he goes flying over the railroad tracks yeah uh, <laughs> and, there, and michael has a great story about almost going out of the car and uh in fact i'll, I'll send you the video of it and uh where he goes uh, he almost goes out of the car in that actual scene and so it was used for that and you know it was beat up pretty good and then it set for a long time so uh the car's been gone completely through in 2015 and and i drive it once every three or four months i drive around the block and make sure everything works and runs oh yeah and, you know go from there that's but i provided vehicles for the movie industry since 1984. 84. i provided a duplicate or a replica of a duesenberg for the dick tracy movie with warren Beatty. Wow. And that was my first car in the movie industry. Then it kind of took off and I uh, provided uh, Camaros for a cop and a half with Burt Reynolds. Worked with Burt Reynolds extensively for several years. Uh, worked with Hulk Hogan he did, uh, when he did his Thunder in Paradise and provided all the vehicles for that. And worked with Universal Studios, Disney's and so forth over the years. Did a Herbie the Love Bug. And Herbie. Herbie the Love Bug. That's iconic. Yeah, so uh, I have a few of those, uh, those kind of cars. So I imagine you were a big Miami Vice fan. Oh, absolutely. For, to like have the diligence to pick, attain this car. My son, when Miami Vice was popular, he was 16. And he thought he was Don Johnson. You know, he had the white jacket. He, you know, <laughs> <laughs> he had a Mustang, but it was okay. You yeah. Know, because oh, yeah. Because it was all deal. And uh, was wearing the, you know, the pink T-shirts and the, and the white jackets. And, uh, so the whole story on that, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, they sent uh, they sent Don Johnson down to go out with Steve Jackson. Steve Jackson was head of Miami Vice. He was the real Miami Vice cop, and he was a consultant for the movie. And so when Don Johnson showed up, they took him out on a stakeout. So for two to three days, he was in a stakeout. So when he came in back into the police station and Michael Mann was there, he looked at him, he had a three-day growth of beard, you know, and no socks on, you know, the whole deal. And he said, that's it, that's the look we want from Miami Vice. So that's, that's how they got the uh, Miami Vice look uh, from, from there. That's amazing. And this car, what chassis is, what Ferrari it, model is this based off of? This is, a, they were all 68, 69, 70, or whatever, up to about 81 or 82 Corvettes. Okay. And, um, uh, Tim McBurney had a Daytona Spider in his garage and looked at him and measured him and said, wait a minute, there's the same measurement. So he wow. made a mold off of that Daytona and built the original car. And then they built another one, and then my, uh, Ferrari found out about it. They sued him. They found out about it. They so it was built off, of, it was supposed to be uh, represent a Daytona Spider. Daytona Spider. Like right. mid-70s or? Uh, the, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, 60, uh, 60, 69, 70, 70, that, that, that era. Wow, and I mean, this, you know, if you were to look at a Daytona Spider and, and put it next to each other, it's almost be impossible to tell the difference. They're all, these are all Ferrari parts, you know, the bumpers and the taillights and everything, it's all Ferrari parts. The difference is the Ferrari has a wind wing and the Corvette does not. Oh. So that's the way to tell the difference from a that's the wind. That's the only difference as far as looking at the car. Other and, than that, they're the same dimensions and exactly the same. I, I uh, admire the car phone there. Is that, oh, yeah. <laughs> that he, Crockett was phone. commonly on the f car phone, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. He? Yeah, Don Johnson had a car phone, of course. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You going to see those one of the camera mounts? Yeah. So, I mean, did any, how many cars of these, did any get destroyed in the filming? Well, this one was supposed to have gotten blown up. It was uh, the, the problem was that uh, because they were driving duplicates and so forth, Ferrari came to him and said, look, uh, if you'll blow the car up on screen, get rid of it, we'll give you three new Testarossas. And uh, so, of course, they said yes. So they set this car up like it was hit by a stinger missile. But, of course, obviously, they didn't blow the car yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's how they got rid of it. Now the Testarossas that came in were black, like this, mm -hmm. but they wanted to make the change to the new, when they did the new show, so uh, Carl Roberts again came to play and he painted the black cars white so they'd show up better. And then he oh. tried to mount the cameras on the Testarossas, which were still gigantic cameras then, and they wouldn't work because the, the hood was aluminum, it just sunk in. So he got a, he went out and got a, uh, a uh, Pantura. They weren't worth that much then and did a mold and made a 
Testarossa out of Pantera so that they could use it to do their jumps. Oh, and do Di Tommaso their... Pantera. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And that's what they built the uh, what built the Testarossa replica car out of. Oh, so they yeah. did have a replica they, of oh, the yeah, Testarossa a camera car, just kind of like this was, but that was the Testarossa camera car built out of the uh, out of the uh, Pantera. I don't know where that car went. If it, I don't wow. think anything was ever left. That's incredible. And uh, how many of these are still in existence? There's three. There's three. There's three. They said there's two, but there's three. There's one in the museum at the uh, Volus Museum okay. in Chicago. Okay. And that was a car that belonged to Carl Roberts. And then there's one in a private uh, collection. Wow. And uh, then this car. Amazing. But this is the only camera car that the only... was built strictly by Carl Roberts for the purpose of uh, doing all the stunts. Wow. That's the that's the, the light that they you know when they is that the light that they put on the front yeah oh well they put it up on the, yeah on the dash the, they put it <laughs> oh the, my gosh when they did the when they did the thing this is the light here yeah magnetic and it, that, that was the light <laughs> that they they used I love that and then this is this is a script that. Uh, Steve Jackson, who was the real Miami Vice cop, was actually in this scene. Now, he couldn't say but three words because he wasn't uh, a union, but signed by Carl Roberts, who, of course, built the car, and signed by the whole, all the crew members that, that were on the actual show, and this is the, uh, the original script. And that's the original script. Is mm -hmm. that season one or what? what? That's season one. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what you can see is uh, myself and uh, Michael Talbot. Michael Talbot. Okay. Uh, this is the whole crew. Of course, Mike signed there. Wow. And this is uh, the Uzi that I have in there. I can lay that out there if you want to see that. And that's the Uzi in that picture, <laughs> which is the, the uh, prop gun. Yes. And, of course, uh, Carl Roberts signed this. This is the letter from Carl. That's the, you know, the camera mounted on the car. Yes. And this is, of course, from Michael. And some pictures of the car, and uh, that's uh, Carl Roberts' design. Letter from the cameraman, Will Williams, that those are consistent with what they mounted on the car when they shot the film. Wow. And then uh, uh, there's Carl Roberts and Michael and myself with the car. He still looks the same. So pretty much. His <laughs> hair's gray now. But, yeah. And that's Carl. And, uh, that's the whole thing. and that was how the camera set originally was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unbelievable. And then I'll get that Uzi because that's kind of Oh, cool. yes. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're wondering, this, this is the car that's from the show, which is incredible. Yeah, the whole statue right there with the machine gun. You, you don't need anything else. There you go, Don. <laughs> That is, and the and the badge, and you got the badge. That's oh, it's a real the badge. badge. I have not Don's. I couldn't get it. That's Tubbs. That's Tubbs. Yeah. What? Yeah. Oh. Oh my gosh! It really is. Yeah. And then this is the ID. And where's oh, it's on the back. Oh my god! What? Wow. Got it. This guy, I mean, you never expect that. This guy just has literally the Miami Vice car just tucked in his backyard. <laughs> like, literally, and then I'm just, you know, gonna grab my, got me Uzi here <laughs> with my casual. The casual Miami, you know, just strolling the streets of Florida with my Uzi. <laughs> and you gotta, you gotta carry the paper. Don Johnson's Nippo. Yep, you're gonna carry the. All right, Don, it's 
get out of here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at me like that. My boyfriend's right here. So much. <laughs> <laughs> He brought Don back. He brought Don back. <laughs> He's lighter than he looks. <laughs> Thank you.